is up everybody welcome back to my youtube channel today i'm going to talk to you all about my fitness journey this is a highly requested video people always ask me on tiktok on instagram and even in person how long i've been working out for if i played any sports why i started working out so i just thought it'd be great to consolidate it all into one video as a warning i will be sharing some embarrassing pictures so just wanted to throw that out there before we get into it so like i said the biggest question that i'm asked is why i started working out and how long i've been working out for it and to be honest all i remember from my childhood and why i started working out is that i was overweight and that i didn't want to be overweight now you'll see with the pictures i kind of just look like a chubby kid i wasn't really you know obese that it, to the point where it was a health concern but i think you know, part of my childhood trauma and being called Morty as a nickname, it kind of contributed to my perception of myself. Like I look back at those pictures now and I'm like, I was just a kid. Um, so I think like for context, the reason why I started doing what I was doing is because I had this thought that I was severely overweight. Um, and that came just from comments from, you know, the South Asian community and elders and whatnot, and it kind of just gets to you. So that's why I started, and I am grateful that I did start. But my journey was definitely ignited out of fear of being overweight, and I just wanted those comments to stop. Okay, so now let me show you the embarrassing pictures in question. So this right here, in this picture, I was eight years old. This was in 2007. Um, I was pretty chubby. You can see the rolls on my stomach, but that's okay. Like, that's what I'm saying. I was just a kid. And in this picture right here, this is 2009. Once again, I'm still a kid, but you can see that my face is pretty round. And I used to be super, super self-conscious of my arms. Like, I remember, I remember seeing this picture and I was like, oh my God, my arms are so big. And I also heard other people say that. So... That was, yeah, I mean, this is what, 2009, so I was like 10 years old here, but once again, super, super aware of the way that I looked. And this picture right here, this is in 2011, and I just kind of threw this in there as an honorary mention because of the picnic edit, like this is OG Facebook, like you had to deep fry the picture and add your name on it. So just wanted to throw that in there for the culture. So that's kind of what I looked like as a child growing up. I was a little bit overweight. I had a round face, big arms, but like once again, in retrospect, I just think that I was a chubby kid. Um, and in eighth grade, I saw flyers for volleyball tryouts and I thought sports were so cool. Like I love the uniforms. I love that they got to go on a bus to go play their games. And I love that idea of camaraderie. Um, when it came to sports in school so on a whim i literally decided to try out for volleyball my parents are immigrants they never really put me into any formal sports growing up like i know a lot of people in school played in leagues outside of school i never had any of that in retros like i didn't think i even had an athletic bone in my body but i just thought sports were so cool and like pep rallies and all that so i tried out for volleyball in eighth grade and i was so trash like I still remember to this day what the coach looked like that she like thought I had potential and she was nice to me and she let me on the team and you can see from this Facebook status here that I did indeed make the volleyball team and no this isn't edited I literally screenshotted this off my Facebook I was so excited to play volleyball and I honestly had a lot of fun even though I wasn't great and I didn't start in the games I definitely love going to practice and having the routine of going to school going to volleyball coming home and doing work and passing out like that was that was my life like it was a lot for me like I said I wasn't any good but I still enjoyed it so when I got to high school I continued to play JV in the fall and then in the spring the high school also had a badminton team and so I played badminton in the spring and don't clown me okay it was very competitive it's not like your PE or your backyard badminton like I was competitive and while I wasn't good at volleyball I was very good at badminton so shout out to my south asian genetics because that's really all that i came from and that kind of also made me think like oh maybe i am like you know a little bit athletic so while playing these sports did improve my physical health um, i did still hear a lot of comments about my weight and my physique and i was largely unhappy and very self-conscious about the way that i looked so when i was in high school and i was still too young to get a gym membership i did these um I did these home workouts from YouTube. The YouTube channel's name is called Hasfit. But like, it wasn't, 
I love the YouTube channel. I think they're great and they were so, so helpful for me in my like fitness journey and learning how to do certain exercises. But me personally, like I didn't utilize it well. Like I would do like three 15 minute ab workout videos at home and thought that I was doing something. Um, but in retrospect, like it was great for me to learn those exercises and overall build confidence when it came to exercises. So it wasn't enough to like, you know, actually change my physique. But it did, you know, introduce me to those exercises and just making exercising a habit overall. And as soon as I was old enough to go to Planet Fitness, I joined the gym. Um, I believe I was 14 at the time when I joined the gym. I would have my parents drop me off and pick me up. Um, and all I did the whole time was cardio. Like, I didn't know what else to do. And I would see people sweat like a bunch on the Stairmaster. I thought being really sweaty meant that you had a really great workout and that you're losing weight and that's really all that I wanted. So I did cardio for a long, long time when I was there, one to two hours on like stairs and treadmill. Like, I don't know how I did all that. Um, and then once I started feeling more comfortable in the gym, I would also go off to the side and do the ab workouts that I was doing at home. So that also helped me build confidence um, to take up space in the gym and do things other than cardio. So during this time, I definitely got more comfortable with being in the gym and I started to follow Instagram influencers like Hannah Oberg, Lisa Fit, Chrissy Sella, Steph Fit, like all, like I still have those workouts saved on my Instagram. Like, look, this is a screenshot. I literally dug so deep and found that I still had these workout days. I didn't try many of them in retrospect, but it definitely gave me some inspiration and an idea of which exercises target which muscle groups and I think just in general having like a person or like a physique that I wanted to look like was inspiring for me to keep on going. Even if I didn't try the workouts, having these women to look up to and like their physiques was great inspiration wise. While I didn't try all the workouts, I did try some of them and in retrospect like they were just like influencer workouts like at that time it like this was before 2016, like, but I was in high school, so, like, between 2012 and 2016, these influencers would do, like, random combination of exercises, like, on the cables, or, like, holding onto the cables and walking back and saying that it, that it was a glute workout, but it's, like, great for you if that works, but, like, now that I have the knowledge that I have, it's, like, that's not, that's not the best workout for your glutes, you know what I mean? So, I kind of did what was... I kind of used the information that was available to me, but in retrospect, I don't necessarily think it was quality information. I would literally consider those like influencer workouts. Like they have a great body, but doing those workouts isn't going to give you that body. At the time, I didn't know any better, so I kind of just used the information that was available to me. By the end of high school, my body did change a bit just because I was going to the gym regularly. You can see here what I look like. I don't really have that much muscle definition, but I think, you know, this like I looked healthy, like I wouldn't really consider myself to be chubby, um, even though I probably felt like it during that time. Um, I don't think that I was necessarily chubby at the end of high school, I think I was just healthy. I carried on my gym habits and consistency during my freshman year of college. I was a commuter, so most of what I did was going for runs um, before, after school. Um, you can see this picture here, this is from my apartment. I don't really have, once again, any like muscle definition but i was still pretty healthy and i would say pretty heart healthy like i would run at least two three miles a day and then maybe do some core and call it a day but that was like i was very consistent with it i didn't really touch weights until 2017 which was my sophomore year of college um, at that point i had moved onto campus so the gym and you know the weight section was much more accessible to me in comparison to being a commuter i found this old video of me and my friend um, I was squatting her. You can see my squats weren't the strongest, but I had a little bit of strength in me. Like, this is baby Alicia right here. She didn't know she'd be able to squat three plates. I didn't really start training upper body until 2018, which was like the later part of my sophomore year of college. But once again, a lot of what I did was influencer workouts. And while it was evolving, it's not nearly the same information that we have access to on the internet today. So once again, it wasn't enough for me to completely recompose my body structure. Um, but it was definitely like a good start and introduction to just touching weights for upper body. I think people really 
underestimate the effect of just starting. I continued working out consistently all through college, um, but my approach was kind of like a YOLO one. Like I kind of just walked in and saw what the vibes were, what machines were available. Most of the days I would start off with a little bit of cardio, hit a lift, do some machines, do some core and call it a day. I think my workouts were like an hour, like flat. I didn't have a split. It was a very YOLO approach. So like I, I didn't see huge changes in my body because I was kind of just doing whatever, familiarizing myself with the machines once I was comfortable um, and continuing to use them. I think by the time I was done with college, I was able to squat like one plate on the squat rack and that was like a heavy day for me and in terms of upper body like i was moving like fives on lateral raises every day and like the only back exercise i ever did was lat pull downs like it was very bare minimum strength when it came to upper body um but i was really really focused on like squats deadlifts hip thrusts like i loved hitting legs at that point in time then during my senior year of college the pandemic hit in 2020 and i had to move back home all the gyms were closed and I didn't really have access to anything. I got a pair of 5 pound dumbbells and a pair of 10 pound dumbbells and I downloaded the Nike training app um, and I did a bunch of HIIT workouts on there. Luckily COVID came during the springtime so I was actually able to do those workouts outside on my deck which was actually nice. And it was during this time that I actually started my fitness count. Look, you see the date? Wow, so cute. I did all my workouts on my deck and I recorded them and I shared them to my Instagram. They're still up um, on my Instagram if you want to take a look. So that was the birth of Alicia's Athletics, y'all. I think between March and June of 2020, I lost 15 pounds just doing these high intensity workouts. I didn't really change my diet much, but obviously my form of training was very different and very intense. Um, I'll put some pictures up here, but I think I was around 120 pounds here, which is the lightest I've been probably since like, I don't know, like fourth grade. <laughs> like I've been, like I said, I was, I was pretty heavy all my life. So I was very, very light here. And like I said, it was just high intensity work all the time. In late 2020, gyms finally opened back up. I was a little bit hesitant to go just out of fear of getting COVID, but I went back to Planet Fitness this time with a face mask on and I started to lift again. I'll show you some pictures here of what my physique looked like um, during that time. I started training the way that I would train at school, so like cardio, a little bit of weights, and core. And I did start to incorporate a little bit more of the workouts that I learned in the Nike app. But over time, I did start to do like a push-pull leg split. So push, you're hitting shoulders, tries, chest, pull, you're hitting your back and your biceps, and then legs, you're obviously hitting legs. Okay, that lighting is... The lighting is giving. I started to record some content when I was at Planet Fitness. They're very, very poor quality videos, but they're up on my TikTok if you're interested in seeing what my workouts look like during that time. Then in like the summer of 2021, I changed to the gym that I'm currently at now and I've been at for a little over two years now. And I would say that switch from Planet Fitness to the gym that I'm at now made like the world's difference in my training when i started at this gym i still did push pull legs like i was doing at planet fitness but i definitely trained at a higher intensity the environment was so different like there's power lifters there's bodybuilders and overall you can feel as though the people are more motivated um so like that inspired me to train with a little bit higher intensity and challenge myself a bit more and there's also machines there that i had never seen before so i gave those a try and honestly like that variety of machines makes a huge difference and like i said the people there there were power lifters there were bodybuilders and just overall very motivated people and they were so so knowledgeable and willing to help they would like if i ever you know struggled with the form they would help me out unprovoked which at first i thought was weird but then i learned that they just you know have your best interest at heart so being in an environment filled with so much knowledge definitely definitely helped me advance in my fitness journey and has helped me gotten to the point where i'm at today i did push pull legs like 4 by 12 every exercise for so long and it wasn't really until that i wanted to get my two plate squat that i started to change the way that i trained a bit um, I talked to a couple power lifters and I told them that I was trying to get to my two plate squat and they told me that I was doing too much with my warm ups and that I should train like 
at lower reps for like you know my warm-up weight so I'm not fatiguing myself before I get to two plates um, and that's kind of where I say I started training like a power lifter when it comes to compounds so to increase my numbers for squat bench deadlift I have a power lifters approach but then once I finish you know my compound I'm training like a bodybuilder so I'd call myself like a power builder if I had to pick like a niche but I'm also super into like calisthenics jump rope um, high intensity interval training still athletic training sprints so it's like I would say I'm very much so all over the place and just an overall fitness enthusiast um, but for like my main training I would consider myself a power builder and during the time at my gym my body definitely changed a bunch so this picture is me in late 2021 at my current gym you can see that like I have kind of small legs I have some shoulder definition that definitely came from you know the Nike workouts those workouts gave me great shoulder definition but I was still pretty on the smaller side I'd probably say I'm like 130 here um, and then this picture here is like summer of 2022 I definitely have a little bit more quad definition maybe a little bit bigger um, but still probably between that 130 and 135 range but you can see that my muscle and fat is starting to recomp a bit I definitely look more muscular here and then these pictures are from now quadzilla you know the vibes and then I also have like much larger shoulders and shoulder definition and in general my strength is at its highest and like I definitely would say that my body is constantly changing based on how I'm training my diet and I'm just learning to love it and just accepting it for what it is instead of being like oh I look a certain way I've kind of just learned to accept and love my body at all points of the journey especially as someone who is who grew up being very insecure with their body I just take my body as like a representation of what I'm capable of doing instead of shaming myself I think with the internet it's very easy to think that you know you look manly or you look too big or you look too small and it's just like I'm just accepting the fact that my body is a blessing and what I'm able to do is a result of those blessings and I'm proud of the way that my body looks as a result and yeah, that's about it. That's really been my fitness journey. It started with me being overweight and getting active and then just falling in love with the learning process. I think my perspective on fitness is very much so I am able to rather than I have to. And I think it started off as I have to. So it really transformed over time. And now I think of my body and having a functional body as like the biggest blessing ever. Um, and I think that's why I train to the extent that I do. I'm trying to learn what my limits are as a human um, and also seeing how the relationship with my diet and my training changes. There's just so much to learn and I think it's so fascinating. And my body's kind of just a result of the work that I've been doing. You could consider it work, but for me, it's just a lot of fun. And yeah, that's about it. Once again, thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. If you liked this video or found it to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have any comments, questions, or video suggestions, please leave those down below in the comment section. See you next time. Bye! <laughs> but it definitely... Lift and core. And while those were evolving over time, it's not nearly like... We don't have access... And while it was...